Hello, this is Justin at the Tech Train again here. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can turn text in PowerPoint into shapes and also why you'd want to. Let me just show you an example quickly here before we get started. Let's say that I'm wanting to create some images here as buttons or icons, one with a house, one with a movie, and one with an at, maybe for contact or something. And I'm going to change the size of that and format it as white, make it bold, and increase that font a little bit more so that that goes over that circle on the right. There we go. And perhaps what I might do is group that text and the circle, as I have done with the two on the left hand side. Fine, it looks okay, but what about if we start wanting to change the size later on? So if I use this one here, which clearly has an image, an icon in the middle of it, and I change the size of the button, then the size of the house inside changes proportionally. The same happens here with this video clip. If I grab the bottom right corner and I stretch that out, you can see that the icon in the middle changes as well, because it's a shape. However, because the A here is simply text, if I try and resize this, what happens is the text stays the same size it was, and it looks really horrible. But with one simple little change, what we can do is fix that. So in this second slide here, these still change so that the picture in the middle proportionally increases, but so does the at on the right hand side, because that text has been converted to a shape. And in fact, you can convert any text to shapes so that you can group them, edit them, and do a whole range of other things with them. So let's see how we do this. So let's go back to the first slide here. Um, again, I have my text box here. So if I ungroup this first of all, right click, group, ungroup. Uh, this here you can see is simply a text box. I can type anything that I like inside this text box. But the problem is, although we can change the size of the font by selecting the text box and changing the font size up here, when we change the size of this, it doesn't affect the font size. So we have to convert this text into a shape. So let's go back to that at symbol there. And what I'm gonna do first of all is draw another shape. I'm gonna draw a rectangle that's slightly bigger than the text here that we want to use. And incidentally, this will work with text of any length. It'll work for a whole paragraph or a title, or in this case, of course, a simple single character. So with this shape here, what I'm gonna do is um, change the color of it. I'll change it to, uh, let's do a yellow so that we can see this a little more clearly. In fact, actually, uh, depending on what screen you're on, let's change it to, uh, to a green. That might make things a little easier for you to see. There we go. Um, I'm gonna drag this text onto the right. You'll see at the moment it's behind that rectangle. So I'm just gonna right click on the edge of the text box and I'm going to go to bring to front. So click on bring to front. So that's now in front of that shape. We can place that anywhere we want on that. Now, if I was doing this myself uh, without demonstrating to anyone, this shape at the back would actually be white, uh, which is the color that I want eventually to use. But it doesn't really matter too much here. Um, what I'm gonna do now is select both the text box in the middle and the shape at the back. We can do this a couple of different ways. Simplest way is probably to click outside the group click and drag a colored frame over the two items. Make sure that the colored frame, the selection frame, does completely cover both. When you let go, both of those objects will be selected. Alternatively, you can simply click on the edge of the text box, hold down the shift key, and then click anywhere on the shape behind it. It doesn't matter too much, as long as they're both selected. Now, once they have both been selected, we need to come to the very top where we have the Shape Format tab. Click on that. And then on the left-hand side, we have Merge Shapes. Click on that drop-down menu here and go down to Intersect. When we click on Intersect, what you'll see happens, apparently, is that the, tech, the shape has disappeared. So what was the point of all that? Well, the point is, this is no longer a text box. I can't click in this. In fact, this is now a shape which I can change in any way that I want 
just as I did with these circles at the top. So what's going on then? When we do the merge shapes, there are different versions uh, of this uh, process. Uh, we could do, um, and this might make it a bit clearer for you, fragment. Fragment basically takes the idea of the shape of this letter and the shape of the back and sort of punches through like a hole puncher, punching a hole through the shape at the back, but with this text, but keeping the text. So imagine having a hole puncher, punching a hole in paper, then rescuing the little circle, the little cut out circle, and putting that back in where it came from. So you've now got two separate parts. Uh, so we could do um, fragment, and then you'll see that what happens is I have one bit, which is the paper with a hole punch. I have the letter and I also have this little bit in the middle here as well. Uh, so I could do it that way and then simply delete these two. Uh, but in fact, I think it's quicker and easier to do intersect. And that way it simply gets rid of the two bits we don't want. Now this is no longer a text box, I won't be able to edit it anymore. But if I bring this up into position and I hold down shift and then I group these two objects, now it'll behave in exactly the same way as it did with these two. So that's how to turn text into shapes in Microsoft PowerPoint and also one very good reason why you'd want to. I hope you found that useful. If you did, it would be fantastic if you could just take a second to click the like below to like this video. That would be brilliant. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, do leave a comment below. I read all comments and I do try to reply to all of them as quickly as I can. If you uh, haven't subscribed to this channel already, do hit the subscribe button and then you'll be uh, well aware of when new videos are coming out. Uh, I do aim to publish videos every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 o'clock p.m. UK time. That's 11 in the morning central time. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye for now.